Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Denon and the model number is PMA 255 UK. This unit retailed when it was released about £160 so we'd probably say that this is a entry level unit. General specifications RMS power output is 30 watts per channel and that's 2 times 8 ohm speakers but this will increase to 50 watts if you connect 4 ohm speakers. Headphone socket so this is a quarter inch jack you can also do the tone defeat by passing the tone control circuits from the front and it has individual base travel and balance controls which is nice on an entry level unit rather than just simply having a balance control and then frequency response is 20 Hz up to 80 kilohertz and then total harmonic distortion we're looking at 0.03 percent and all of the inputs are what we term line so that means that you cannot connect a turntable with either a moving coil or moving magnet type cartridge. And the inputs that it supports is CD stroke DVD, AUX1, AUX2, tape, MD stroke tuner. And overall dimensions are 435 millimeters wide, height 115 by 286 millimeters deep. And overall weight for the amplifier comes in at 5.7 kilograms. Now, I am a fan of Denon and I've worked on multiple units over the time what you'll find with this amplifier is if you go and try and do an internet search to try and track down a service manual unfortunately you'll not find this I discovered this a number of years ago when I contacted Denon directly and their advice was that because Denon had been acquired you know over decades by many different companies some of the archive records had not been transferred over to the new companies which is a shame because most amplifiers of course also have a service manual to support it but not in this case so what I'm alluding to is that when we get later on within this tutorial video unfortunately what I cannot show you is an extract from the service manual which will show the circuit diagram for the pre-amplifier and output stage so what was the issue when the unit came into the workshop well the first thing uh, to note here is that when you took off the top cover and of course I've mentioned this on many tutorials previously you have quite a heavy dust layer now that's not a bad thing you know it just falls through the vent grills at the top but it did indicate that this amplifier had never been worked on before and there'd been no form of service work which is good from a service point of view that is a very very good position to be in because what you're not attempting to do is try and put back maybe work which has been carried out and if it hasn't been done correctly you are sort of going to get it back to normal operation or what it was previously before you can then get it into the fault finding side so always good so what we do here is we just remove all the internal dust so that's normally with a compressed airline and a soft stiff brush and then in terms of disassembly it is very straightforward what you have to do is you have to remove the back plate from the amplifier so you have a series of multiple screws and then you'll also see that there's a screw which fixes in place the terminal speaker binding posts once you've done that what you can do is you can just lift up the back panel it's sort of hooked in left and right and then just put that to one side you will need to remove the strain relief grommet where the power cable comes in now the next part of disassembly is if you turn the amplifier over what you'll find is that there are two fixing screws which go through the heat sink of the amplifier and then you'll see that there are three fixing screws underneath where you have the metal bezel where it attaches to the bottom chassis once you remove those, when you look from the top left and right, what you'll see is that there are two additional fixing screws which just lock it into the left and right parts of the chassis. Now, what I'm showing you here next is a cable tie. And the reason why I'm showing you that is that you will need to cut this cable tie in order then to just pull the front fascia forward with the board, the amplifier board and the tone control boards all in place. You don't need to remove them. And that will allow you then to lift up the board and then to start doing your service work or in this case the repair work now the issue with the amplifier was intermittent loss of sound and this is by far probably the most common issue that you find and it's always age related and I've covered it in multiple tutorials before and you can apply what we're going to do here to any amplifier it's not unique to Denon or Morantz or Cambridge or any other amp it's just something which is age related now typically this fault can manifest itself in multiple ways. It could for example be that the speaker protection relay which I'm showing you here develops oxidization on the switching contacts, contacts or maybe pitting 
and that can become, become resistive so that when the signal passes through it's acting like a resistor and you can get distortion or sometimes the contacts are so oxidized that you just get a breakthrough of audio and it's normally if you increase the volume control so you're passing more current through the contacts through to the connected speakers and then that will be enough just to overcome the resistance and then you'll hear the audio. You can have exactly the same issue maybe if you've got a dirty volume control or it may well be that the input selection switch has dirty and again oxidized contacts. So when these amplifiers come into the workshop and it is applied for any brand model or make we do the same work. So this amplifier doesn't have electronic switching it doesn't have a single rotary switch. What happens is that you have a switch selector from the front and it has a ribbon connector. And what I show you now is the input selection switch and it just clips onto the top and you have an actuator which goes through to the plastic slide. And what you have inserted into there are the switch contacts and they just go along the rails of the switch. Now, you will need to desolder the switch from the board and then what you have to do is just to disassemble that switch. It's quite straightforward. You'll see that there's some bent over pins which you can just bend back. Don't bend them fully back. You don't want them to break off. And then you can then extract the switch and then the mechanism. And what you're seeing is a degree of oxidization on the switching contacts. Now some amplifiers, it's severe depending on the environment. Here, it looks like this amplifier was in a reasonably good environment and you didn't get heavy oxidization. So the way in which you undertake the work is that you use a fiberglass pencil and you use that then just to remove all of the oxidization. And then what we do is we use deoxy grease, uh, not too much, just enough because it's a slip contact and we put that onto there and it will also provide some longevity to try and prevent future oxidization over time. The other point is that you can clean the volume control potentiometer with again deoxy D5 spray. It's a case on these amplifiers where you've got easy access. Some of the newer type amplifiers, if you get dirt maybe on user controls, could be balanced treble, bass controls, or even volume controls, of course. It's difficult to get access and you probably have to take them apart. Here on these older type amps, the potentiometers have access ports or holes, and it's the case you just spray into there, and then what you'll need to do is just rotate the potentiometer backwards and forwards multiple times, and that will then clean off the carbon tracks. It's always good best practice maybe to take some kitchen roll and just put that, maybe if you've got it on a vertical plane or horizontal plane, just around the potentiometer, just to soak up any of the switch fluids or switch cleaning fluid which comes out. And then what we also do is we replace the speaker protection relay. Now some relays you can take the top cover off and you can clean them. But for me, because this is like a routine service, I'm not spending time to do that work. It's very, very easy just to replace the relay. And that's what we did here. So the relay specification is 24 volts DC coil switch. And it's a double pole, so contact for left and right channels. And it's a change over type. So we have this terminology where we say contacts are normally open or normally closed. What we're referring to is that when the relay is de-energized, you have the center contact which moves and switches between two other contacts. When we say something is normally open, it means that the power is not connected to the relay coil and those contacts are open with reference to the switching contact. If we say something that is normally closed, it means again if there is no power applied to the relay, then the contact will be made. For all amplifiers where you have the speaker protection circuit in place, it's actually using the normally open contact. So even if you had maybe a six pin relay, for the switching contacts plus two additional pins of course for the uh, coil of the relay you can cut off what would be the normally closed contacts because you don't need them and then it will then fit into the board it's always important to do this kind of work because if you maybe just address the speaker protection relay issue or maybe the volume control potentiometer issue or the input switch it's really a combination of all of these things commonly so what you don't want to do is just maybe tackle one of them and then you then get onto a test phase and you try and do you know your initial test and then you find out you've got another issue. What I do appreciate is for many of you, if you are maybe listening to these tutorials and viewing them for the very first time, you might be considering undertaking core service work on an amplifier either that you buy, maybe from an auction website, or it's your own amplifier. 
and it's a learning phase so you know you could go through the point where you're trying to diagnose you know what's this distortion or intermittent loss of sound but here this is telling you the three most common causes for that issue and if you do this work you know nine times out of ten you're going to find that the amplifier really will be as good as new now although we don't have a service schematic what i am showing you next is the output transistor so this is a push pull pair and you can see that these are Sanken devices. So the output transistors are a 2SD2083 and the complementary pair to that is a 2SB1383 and the smaller transistor in the middle that's your driver transistor and that is 2SC4495. Now although this amplifier is entry level it does produce an exceptionally good sound. So again, if maybe you're thinking of buying a second-hand amplifier, I mean, maybe you want to buy a separate unit like this and connect it you know, to whatever you want, it's a good amplifier to go seek out and purchase. And what you find is some of these older amplifiers, particularly the Denons, are extremely robust. And you can pick them up you know, relatively cheaply. And again, as I've said in many tutorials, if you carry out this service work then yeah, you know, you're going to be rewarded with a really good sounding amplifier at a very low price, and the build quality is excellent. You know, this amplifier has been around, around for decades, and what I'm showing here is the circuit board underneath lifted up, and what you can see is all of the solder joints, and there's no dry solder joints at all. And the next thing that I'm showing you is the headphone socket, and again, you would expect typically maybe some cracking around these pins, which is common. On many amplifiers but not on this series you find the denon and, and maybe they weren't using flow soldering machines at the time but there's no sparseness of solder these solder joints you know there's a good amount of solder around them and it's very very seldom if any any that i find where they need to be reflowed so really really good build quality and then in terms of sort of final adjustment for this amplifier the bias for the amp for each channel is actually 10 millivolts. So what I show here is the multimeter just in the background. And what you'll see is that there are test connectors on the board, left and right. And these are three pin test connectors. But you're only using the two outer pins, not the center one that's not used. And what you need to do is make sure that you have no speakers connected. Your volume control will be set to minimum. Your balance, treble and bass controls set to midpoint and no input signal connected and then the next thing is really to leave the amplifier running probably for about 20 minutes in a stable environment just so it warms up and it's normal operating temperature and as I've detailed in other tutorials it's probably wise just to spray a bit of deoxids into the presets which you use to adjust the bias and then this of course is with the amplifier switched off Rotate them back and forth, return them back to about the original position and that will clean off the carbon track. The reason why I'm telling you to do that is if the amplifier has never been serviced, you can find that these carbon tracks become dirty and it makes it a little bit more difficult to try and make the adjustment. Instead of it being nice and smooth, it sort of jumps around because of the dirt. So here, once you clean them with deoxid, again, you can reinitialize the amplifier, power it back up and then it's very easy just to adjust until you read the nominal millivoltage of 10 millivolts. Um, here, the first channel on the left, you know, was within 0.2 of a millivolt, so no real concern. But the other channel was slightly out, a little bit low, and just really a final adjustment. So once that had all been done, you know, the amplifier is then put under a full load test, and I have no doubt that the customer, you know, will have a lot of listening pleasure from this unit in the future. So really that sort of brings us to an end to, of this tutorial. I do apologise sometimes that some of these more recent tutorials, we don't sort of get into any detailed fault finding. But the reason for that is this is the faults that the amplifiers come in with. So, you know, hopefully on the next tutorial, we'll be able to get a lot more deeper into fault finding and find, you know, an issue down to component level. I suppose you could say, well, yeah, well, the relay is faulty and you're sort of showing that at the end of the video. But, you know, there's no sort of high details of electronic fault finding. It's more so just a systematic approach of just replacing the speaker protection relay and then cleaning the contacts both on the input selection switch 
and of course connections or the carbon tracks inside of the user control potentiometer uh, for the volume and that really eradicates any issues which are related to intermittent loss of sound. So I really do appreciate you stopping by and as always I thank you for your time and if you have any questions by all means reach out either leave uh, comments below or alternatively you can email direct to audio amplifier servicing at aol.com and of course I will come back to you and provide any guidance or assistance that you're looking for. So until the next time I wish you all the very best. Cheers and goodbye.